And now it's action time. Let's design a shift register that can be loaded with an 8-bit value and then shifted right or left depending on the user's decision. For this project, you are going to need the following Verilog files. Shift left right low drag and TB shift left right low drag. Let's analyze the module's block diagram. We have a load enable signal, a shift left right, a positive edge clock signal, an 8-bit input and an 8-bit output. The async reset end signal was not represented to keep the schematic sample. When load enable has the value 0, the value from the input i is passed to q. The register is not shifting now. When load enable has the value 1, the register starts shifting. If shift left right is 0, then the register will shift left. Otherwise, the register will shift right. This is the complete design behavior. The very low code is very simple and similar with the other shift registers. We first declare the module ports at lines 3 to 8. All the very low code is in a single always at procedure that has pause edge clock and neg edge reset n as control signals. At line 13, we implement the active low reset n mechanism. Next, at line 15, we have the next important signal for this register, which is load enable. If it has the value 0, then Q will get the value of I. At line 17, we start a begin end block where we describe what happens when load enable is 1 or when the register is in the shift state. At line 18, we state that if shift left right is 0, then we shift Q one bit to the left. Otherwise, we are going to shift Q one bit to the right. Verilog procedures can grow quite big while describing complex circuit behavior. But if you know what is the intended behavior, writing the code is very simple. The test bench is very simple and has the same structure as our previous test benches. The test bench code is split in two for more clarity. This is the first part of the test bench. At line 33, we declare the test bench variables, and at line 41, we instantiate the DUT and connect its ports with the test bench variables. At line 33, we declare the test bench variables, and at line 41, we instantiate the DUT and connect its port with the variables. This is the second part of the test bench. At line 51, we create a 1 MHz clock. At line 54, we create stimulus and monitor the I.O. ports. First, we reset the module and the input variable's value at line 59. At line 63, we load the register with 8 bits of 1. Load enable was previously set to 0, so the shift register was already waiting for data to be loaded. At line 64, we enable the module to start shifting. Data is going to be shifted to the left, since the variable shift left right is 0. After waiting some time to let the module operate, we are going to load the register with another pattern at line 68. At line 69, we enable the right shift operation. The initial block from line 75 is used to control how much the test bench lasts. Feel free to add more patterns in the register and shift them left or right. Use code snippets from the existing lines. This is the test bench result. You can see both in the console and in the wave how data is shifted left or right and how the value of Q changes after each clock cycle.